there, guys. <clears throat> Let's get set up. Well, look at that. That's fascinating how I need to raise it up a bit. So thankful you guys are here. Thank you so much for, for joining me. Trying to get settled. <clears throat> so, for all my students that are joining, Melissa, Beth, thank you for being here. I always so appreciate that y'all show up and watch the demonstration and it's you know it's very it's very enheartening so I, I thoroughly thank you so I'm about to get ready to work on this painting so this is the second week we are working on this setup we we started on it this is this is my a demonstration for my Wednesday morning floral and oils class, floral uh, floral painting class. And three weeks ago, so like on the very first week of the term, we we started this painting. However, it's a complex painting, and it would benefit with a additional. Um, with an with like an additional attention hi Anne. i'm so glad you guys are here you're here um wilma oh my goodness wilma hi i'm so glad to see you too and patty thanks for being here and porna and mitch murdoch thanks for joining um so i am going to uh, you know i essentially am showing like how do you do a refinement layer and like how do you you know how do you take a painting that's a good block in. So like this is the block in, which is good. It's expressive. You know, here's block in too. That's block in. But then you take it to that. Whoops. Um, you take it to that level. And that's what that's what we're doing today. So in my floral class, we we paint a la prima, which is like you paint kind of um, or we t we treat the class like as one painting, get it done. Or we can do this, we can paint a paint, work on a painting where we paint it indirectly, which means that we're using multiple layers and we are painting, you know, we're using the, the, the proper method, archival methodology for your oil painting. That means that you are painting fat over lean and we are, you know, being cognizant of, of what a painting needs to stay, you know, to be a good archival painting for the, and to hold up for the test of time. Okay, so I am super glad to be here. I am I'm always happy to be painting. And I also know it's an honor. It's it is an honor to have you guys tune in as well. So thank you, thank you. Um, it's always such a a pleasure to be painting for you guys. So, I need to get started. And So I'm going to start mixing paint and moving, moving into the piece. So like I, I, I want to work over here for my demonstration right now. So we'll see how far I get. Um, but I, I really kind of, and I, I need to work in like that area as well, but I really want to get into here. So that's, that's where I'm going to focus on um, my right now, so. So I'm 
got these wonderful peachy pinks. Cassandra, I'm so glad you are here. Art and Fr Frenchies and Susan Trag, glad you're here. Um, Bess Harris, uh, Rabath, I'm glad you're here too. Pam, hi, Pam and Rufia and GS Shea, I guess. Thank you so much for being here. So, okay, so let's get going. Okay, so I've got this these, this peachy pink, and I've got this shadow shape. Now, I've laid in uh, the blue background, so I'm going to paint it on it. That's a little bit too light in value, but it's a great, great start. So now I know. I know that that's actually more appropriate for my light part of this flower. So I'm going to work on that. I'm getting... And I, I want to be careful about not picking up dirty paint. So I had to clean up. Christine. Oh, nope. I, guys, I don't do any requests to be part of my life. But I appreciate the request. Um... So I okay, so I've painted, but because there's that blue background, I want to I have to flip over and start with my clean side of my brush. And there we go. But there we go. And then there's like that's darker and it's not as as peachy as I got it, so I gotta adapt my color. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so creamy warm center shape so I mixed a little bit of cat, cobalt um, green in with my mixtures of permanent rose and cad vermilion and what that does is it it desaturates my color just a little bit, but at the same time, it still keeps that warmth and that pinkiness. And now I'm painting, it'll need to go dark. It'll need to become more saturated, I think, but I have to be careful um, and make sure that my values, my values are staying where they need to stay. I always find that in, in really bright, intense colors, like the, the peachy fuchsia color of this of these flowers it's so easy to um, go too dark too too fast with these with these colors so I want to make sure that I stay where it needs what makes for a better a better painting Flowers. Are you painting a lot from um, GS Shay? I'm actually having. I'm working from photo reference because this is um, for my class that I'm teaching every Wednesday, and so that way all my students have the opportunity to be working from the same subject matter. We, 
I provide photo references for all my students and then they work from the photo references and since I'm demonstrating the same the same subject matter for them I too am working from from photo reference and it's my own personal photo reference Yeah, so this is what so I'm slowly working through and you know I, I want to get my values darker in some areas and when I, I like to squint at my subject matter and that helps me like figure out if I'm going too too dark or too light. And so I'm gonna go a little bit darker there. Um I'm thinking I I haven't gone it's a, a fine line between two, two purple versus two pink. So I think, and then there's some colors there that I want to, yes, that's nice. Okay, so Now the, this flower is lighter in value, so I'm going to lay down a lighter value. And as the um, Oops, now I went too dark. So it's always a fine line between light enough and dark enough. Okay, so. Really nice, so I love, I love painting flowers and I love this opportunity to to just really highlight and and like celebrate the diversity that also you know we're so lucky that um, we have such diverse flowers and plants to to even paint I mean there's so much there's so much variety out there um, So, let's see, I've got that shape and then it comes here and then the, like that. And yes, there is some variation and then there's a bit that comes down and we have another bit that goes out and then we have a big Petal. We have some petals that capture light. So I want to capture that. There's that flower. 
Oh, I love. Okay. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that feels, that's really nice. I'm liking how that's coming together. And, and then I've got, one of the things I love about flowers is the, the crinkly, lacy bits, so to speak. I love how, how flowers have that variety of texture. Um, they're, you know, they're bright in color, but they also are so, so, they can be so expressive, so, let me capture that light, oops. Yeah, okay, so. I wanna make sure that my, um, okay, so I am, I've, you know, I'm really liking how the, this is going, how, so I'm, but I need to get a couple of the, there's some dark notes and some patterning that I got to get in. And so I want to get that in and there's like a center there. And then there's this wonderful pattern on the, on these petals. I want to capture that. Okay. Ugh, so nice. Okay, so I'm, you know, I'm just going through and like enjoying and painting. Oh, I gotta get my shadow shape in. But, and I of course accidentally obliterated. That happens. But that's what's so nice about oil painting is that um, it's a very forgiving medium, so you can continue to do stuff. But I think that's, an, you know, I'm in a good spot there. So I'm gonna put a couple of marks in, but then I'm gonna move forward. Oh, that's not. So, so thank you guys. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm really loving how that, this is coming together. I know that there's more to do, but I want to, I want to move on because it, I've got enough of that, those, those flower shapes painted. And like one of the things when you're painting flowers is that not every flower not every flower needs to be painted to the same level of completion. Um, and so like I can kind of leave these guys a little bit more sketchy because they're not my focal point. Um, they, you know, they are important, but they're not my focal point. So I'm gonna move on because I really think like this area right there is more important, but I need to work in this, that area. So. Let me get that down. I have a bud. It's right here. I need to get that bud in.
we go. And then I have another bud right here. And it comes down right there. Okay, and then I want that capture. I want to capture that. So. Right there. And the butt ends right there. So, okay. So now I need to, I want to work on the way the the darker flowers interact with what's going on over here. So I'm gonna get that in. And then like there's a bit there. Oh, and then there's leaves that I need to get in. But I also wanna get this flower in right there. So guys, thank you so much for being here. You guys are, it's always a pleasure to have you join. I am teaching. This is my extra perk for my, my class that I'm, I teach every Wednesday, my floral painting class. And we have, we're painting azaleas. Um, this is our second week working on them. So we're actually learning how to, how to take a, a and a, you know, the, take a painting and refine it to another level. So we are, we are painting indirectly and, and it's, you know, it's just, well, in my opinion, it's super fun. It's what makes, oil painting so fun is the you know painting with multiple layers of paint getting your paint to to express in a in a more detailed and in my opinion more beautiful way too there is nothing more beautiful than than the build up of layers and layers of oil paint painting both while, you know, like with, between each successive refining layers, painting, painting multi, you know, with lots and lots of like wet and wet layering. Um, there. Ah, I love that. I love those little details. So let's get, I gotta get that, I wanna get that flower and that bud a little bit more established. So, so I've got this azalea that's in bud. So I wanna get that. Yeah, that's really nice in my opinion. I do say so myself. Yeah, so. And that needs to go a little, I need a little bit more shadow shape. So I'm gonna do that, oh, and then red glow because flower petals are trans translucent so light transmits through them and it makes really really dark or um, not dark very like visually brilliant um, glowing colors thank you Rana K I am so glad you are here thank you gosh all of you guys are here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Made Easy Art, um, Adonis. Thank you. F um, oh, hi, Beth. I'm glad you're here. Um, Haiti and 
um, Fata and Simone, thank you. And the Shroom Tea and El Elaine, I'm glad you're here. So this is, you know, I'm just, I'm just like loving this. You know, I'm, I'm going through my, the, the stages of making this, this painting like more expressive, more, you know, just more, more everything, um, more colorful, more developed. I'm, you know, I'm looking for the places where like maybe like right here, there's that dark, but then like the petal is actually catching light. And so I want to, I want to make sure I capture that glowing aspect of, of it. how and how you can make oh look at that that's so pretty so I would be remiss if I didn't do a little bit of sharing with you guys about that this class it's over in a couple weeks and th uh, this is our third week of the term and we have another three more weeks of the term but then We'll take a bit of a summer break, and then on July 14th, Wednesday, July 14th, we start up again for another, another, another six-week term of flower painting, and we'll be doing all summer flowers that um, during that time. And if you would like to, one of the reasons why I do this painting demonstration on Instagram is because I want to be able to spend more time on critiquing and working with my students in the class itself. So if you would be curious in joining us, I would, I would love to have you join us. We have a really good group of people and I think everybody has been growing so much in the last couple of terms, it's been wonderful. And I would encourage you to join, you know, we'll be, um, so, okay. I'm working on this one leaf or this one flower. Now I can't work on this side of the flower because I got to get, because it happens to this, this side of the flower is over that side. So now I need to switch over. I need to switch gears and get, and get, and start laying in that portion of the of the flower i'm going to actually put a couple of notes of there that was a little bit too flat okay i am going to step back real quick oh yeah that's looking good okay Maddie, Lynn, Roll Away Fine Arts, and Barbara. Hi there. I'm glad you guys are here. And Sanchi just joined. Cool. Okay, so I've got, I'm moving on to, to this part. And I actually have to move the camera because, or my iPhone, because it's actually, I can't see what I'm doing. Because the camera's right there. Thank you, Art by Deepak. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so now, I think you guys can still see enough while at the same time. Let's see now. Does that kind of gets me. Hmm. Okay, so sorry, guys. Um, about the shaking, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to paint and film with my iPhone. Okay, so now, now it's time to get this guy in. And like, one of the things that I love, of, well, I love everything about flowers. There is, I don't think there is a flower, I have not ever met a flower that I didn't love. Um... But what I'm going to do is I'm going to like re 
recalibrate a bit. So one of my favorite colors I like to draw in when I need to recalibrate a couple of things is permanent alizarin crimson, PR177. And so what I need to do is I need to like make sure that the scale of things is working out work the way I want it to. So I need to I need to recalibrate, but it looks like there's a couple of darks that I, I need to get in. And so like right here. I need to get a little bit of dark. I'm gonna make it green. And, and it goes all the way into here. Okay. Let's see. Thank you, Shaham. I do have a tripod that holds it. It's just that I need to move every so often I need to move the 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 camera happens to, or the, the iPhone happens to be in the right in the same spot where my head needs to be. And I being that it's a solid object. And I have I I don't have super I don't have um, X-ray vision I can't look through the actual um, iPhone so it's one of those things. Um, but thanks for the the recommendation. Okay, so I'm gonna like recalibrate my my guy. So what I want to do is I want to like so that's in the right spot. So this is actually lighter. So I need to. I might actually be recalibrating and painting simultaneously. Because sometimes I think I need to recalibrate and then I immediately figure out what I need to be doing. So, and then like I don't, I don't need to be redoing everything. Okay, and so then I've got some shadow shapes over here that need to be probably laid in. Okay, yeah. So I got some purple, some, so I mixed in some purple and I have that and then there's some more shadow shapes right there. So I'm gonna put in that purple, which is my shadow shape. There, yeah. Okay, and then, and then what I realize is, okay, so if this is my edge right there, and then right there is, and oftentimes when I'm thinking about, um, when I'm thinking about my shapes, I like to, even though I've got a whole bunch of curves, I really like to think about them as straight lines because that helps in in like making sure that things stay um, they don't get too soft and loose and kind of goosey kind of um, so I like having the the ability to okay so yeah so, so that that needs to go right there so I've got I'm gonna, there we go. And then from this point, I have a value there. Aha. Like that. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff going on over there. So right now I need like three brushes. Of, I need to like three brushes full of paint. There we go. And then right here. Okay. I'm getting, this is an edge right there. I'm gonna get that edge in. And then I have like another 
edge there. So, and then there's like this beautiful pink and it's like a salmon pink. And I'm mixing my, it's, well, it's a variety of colors, but right now the salmon pink I'm mixing is got cad lemon in it and permanent rose, which is also quinacridone rose and then white. And then this is catching light so it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna grab get that in. Thank you. I'm glad you like this. Yeah. So I've got that edge and then I've got that. It's gonna catch paint. In fact actually my My bowl might be going out just a little bit more. That's what I'm realizing. And so then by going out more, I actually can capture. Yeah, that looks that looks better. And then there's like other other petals. And then this guy is right. Okay, good. I'm right in the right spot for him. I'm gonna get him in. Oh, so pretty. Catching light, looking so good. And then there's like more, a more pinky section. A little bit more peachy. So I'm gonna get that in and then work on that and then nice okay and then I do need to re redraw reassess with my alizarin crimson get that in and then there's like a glowing spot right there I want to capture yeah nice if I do say so myself and then I've got another shadow shape comes up here and then comes through there and then down and yes we have more shadow shape right there too and this guy's a little bit of a shadow but then I'm gonna lay in my peachy color again this area right here is catching light. It's got light catching there. This is a little bit not as I need. Okay. We're doing really good on time. That's great. So it's amazing, like it's all about context guys, because like I'm about to mix the most Pepto-Bismol pink I've seen in a long time and it's what is necessary, it's what's needed. And so I always like to, I try not to ever think about the actual color I'm mixing I, or like specifically like I don't like to label what I'm painting. 
I like thinking about it as like dark, bright, um, red, yellowish. I always like to abstract my colors because it's so easy to start to like once as soon as I label a color like Pepto Bismol pink, I immediately like label it, and so then that has influenced my my decision making process. It's it's influencing the way I judge the painting. And and the, I you know I, that's important. It's important to to be aware of that. So this guy, I'm gonna need to get green in. Okay. Okay. Well. It's coming together. There's still things I need to sort out. Okay, I'm picking up some background color, which then is adulterating my colors. So yeah, this is what I, I love this stage of a painting when like it's I've already done the block in and now I'm like fine tuning. I'm trying to find the areas that will make the painting a stronger painting. And I I'm still trying to abstract the shapes. I'm still thinking about um, th that type of stuff. So that way I can I can um, create an interesting painting. I got a couple of darks that I need to, to, to deal with, but I'm really liking that. Um, so, okay. Thank you guys for being here and letting me paint for you guys. So we've got dark shadow there, and then a little bit, I'm going to get that darker value in right there, and then there's dark value there, and then we have some things that are add. And I want to get that pink in. You too. Thank you. I appreciate that. That makes... I, I'm having so much fun painting this piece. And that's always... I think, you know, I think when you're having a good time, that emotionality shows up also in the painting as well. Which I'm, I'm always... You know, I'm always thankful that when that happens. Okay, so 
certain things that need to be kind of like fixed or not improved upon, refined. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that center bit and then get some more alizarin crimson peeking through. And then there's more that comes up here. This is a really big, I just love painting. I, yes, really nice. Okay, I'm in love. Uh, but now it's time for me to return, circle back to that azalea that I couldn't paint because it happened to be overlapping these guys. So now I can because I've painted what's behind it. So now I can move forward and paint the... What, did, what kind of color did you use in the background? Well, the background is a variety of colors because it's got two layers of paint. Um, today, I used, what did I use? Uh, what did I use? I used, <laughs> sorry, I can't quite remember, but let me think, I gotta think. Um, You know what I used. I used ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, and viridian. So now I have some colors that I like that I always go back to over and over again for backgrounds. Um, one thing I absolutely love using in my backgrounds are is burnt umber. Burnt umber or raw umber, depending on, I guess like depending if I want it to be warm, it's burnt umber. If I want it to be cool, it's raw umber. Um, I like being able to have my background color set up fast. And the umbers just chemically set up so fast that it's exceptionally, like, it's perfect for a background color. So I always um, tend to have that. And... And thank you, Art by Deepak, that you've got five friends watching. That's cool. Where are you from, Art? Art by Deepak. I'm always curious to see, like, where people are that are tuning in. Okay, so I'm... This is coming together. So now I'm almost, almost like done. I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit. So, because I want to paint that guy, that area easily. Um, Yeah, so Faye, I used you. We are all from India College of Art students. Oh, cool! So you're you're from around the world. That's really cool. Um, so Faye, I, I what did I say? I said burnt umber, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and and oh gosh, uh, uh, viridian, viridian. Sorry, viridian. Actually, squeeze out a little bit more white. I just use up my last, my white. So, I'm gonna squeeze that out and try to mix. What? There we go. 
So, cool. So, I'm going to... Got a little bit pink. That happens when it, almost every color on your palette is pink. So your white has gotten a little bit contaminated with pink. That's what's happened. So my white is a little contaminated. So there we go. So I'm gonna work on these guys. Kind of get that together and then there we go nice okay so we have like looks like we've got like two minutes left so I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna like what am I gonna do oh, okay I actually I have more than two minutes worth of work on that guy so I'm gonna actually, I think, stop here. So like when I'm at this point where I'm at a stopping point, I quickly like look over everything and see if there's anything that's picking up a little bit of, of an edge that I don't like. And so I'll go back with a clean brush, clean dry brush, and kind of clean up some, ed some of my edges. I want that to be softer, so I'm gonna soften that. Clean my brush off, and then I kind of I like everything that else is work. How everything else is working, I don't see any bad edges. So that's it for, and essentially I'll rework. I'll work those, but not. I can't get that done in five minutes. So that's my demonstration for today. I appreciate you guys being here. It is always an honor. And let me actually lower. So this is the whole, oops. That's the whole painting as of now. And um, so thank you guys so much. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, um, Sweeney, my Meyer Mirror, and Anne. Thank you, thank you. I really so appreciate you guys being here. This was a lot of fun. Um, Carol, thank you. Um, so I... I teach this class every term, summer, what is it, fall, winter, spring, and summer. We are in the middle of my spring term. I will be teaching, I will be teaching a, a summer term starting July 14th, I believe, on Wednesday, um, July 14th, I believe. Thank you, thank you, Wilma, I'm so glad you're here, you were here. Gita too, thank you, Pam. And I encourage you to join my online classes on painting florals. And I do this free extra hour demonstration to, to spread the word, but also so that way in my actual classes, we are actually spending more time, I'm spending more time giving guidance and um, direction to my students and the work that they're getting done. So I do hope you will join us in one of my classes in the upcoming future. And if not, keep showing up at the these Instagram Lives. Every, every Wednesday that I am teaching, I am teaching a live 2 p.m. at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, guys, you have a really, really great, um, great afternoon. Take care, bye.